it was just amazing, like that feeling of having a goal and actually like committing to it and actually reaching it. Hey honey, welcome back to another video. I am really, really excited to just sit down and be personal with you guys today. This isn't gonna be one of my heavily edited videos. It's gonna be more of a personal video, just a sit down, chat, deep dive Q&A, but also just talking about some life updates and telling you what I've been going through, what things are on my mind, what I thought about this year. So let's get started into the first question. Okay, so the first question is, do you miss living at school? So 100% yes, I absolutely miss living at school. There was so many good things that came from me living at school, living away for a little bit of time, but also just getting to meet so many new people and just put myself outside of my comfort zone. When I went to Pepperdine, I actually didn't know a single person. And even just being there for a little over half a year, I walked away with amazing friends and memories. And I feel like I really put my all into it while I was there. So I don't feel like any regrets about like what I could have done better. But I know like in the back of my mind, there's so many things and so many new memories that could have been made right now if I was over there. But at the same time, like there's so many memories that I've made during this time and not even just memories, but so much growth that I've walked through being at home here with my family. And it's been amazing being here with my family. I know it's brought us closer together. And I also have been able to balance it with seeing some of my friends from school still. So it's kind of the best of both worlds for what the circumstances are. 100% I miss living at school, but I also know that 100% God is just kind of working things together behind the scenes and everything, like where I am right now, that's where I'm supposed to be. And I know that there's still like tons more experiences that are going to come my way. So let's get to the next question. What was your favorite book of the Bible after reading all of it? Which this is going to come out in another video, just explaining that whole process and it being, it was just amazing. Like that feeling of having a goal and actually like committing to it and actually reaching it. So I recently just finished annotating and reading my whole entire Bible. Like I said, I'll explain more of that in another video. But after reading all of it, I feel like normally and it still is James is one of my favorite books out of the Bible but I feel like this year specifically I think the one that really hit me was Psalms Psalms was something that I really dove into and I feel like I normally like passed over it I guess you could say but this year it's just like the time that you read it it can impact you in such a bigger way and so that's what happened to me this year and that's really what got me into reading the whole rest of the Bible and being, like I said, committed to reading every single book and especially the Old Testament, which is harder to get through. I want to say Psalms or James, like those ones are my top two. And then like Romans, I really, really like. Anyways, so many good books, so many good words and just it's 10 out of 10 recommend. Okay, so next question was, how is your dad doing? Okay, so I know so many of you guys are new to my channel right now and you guys might not know what this is, but I'll give a little recap. But if you guys haven't watched the video that I made about, it was a little over a year ago that I made this video, it'll be up in the corner. But my dad a year and a half ago in July last year suffered from a stroke. And so it was a huge traumatic brain injury and very, very just... It impacted our family in a really difficult way, but also we know that, you know, so much good came from it as well, but it's been something new for our family to walk through together and just experience, and it's been full of emotion. But anyways, we were just lucky as a family and we know how lucky we are and blessed we are to have our dad around. I mean, doctors were telling us that he was going to pass away like day after day after day and he still made it. He's here with us. He's improving. And so the update is that he's doing amazing as far as just things that doctors told us they didn't know if he would ever be able to do again. And it just didn't seem likely. Yeah, just as a whole, he's doing really good. And I think the biggest thing for our family is just trusting in the process because none of us had experienced this before um, a stroke in our family before so everything with a person who goes through something like that is nothing is certain and it really just takes a whole lot of time and even with that time it could be like the littlest like improvement and it can be difficult and it can be discouraging at times but it can also be really uplifting when you see when I see him doing things that we just weren't sure if he would be able to do again physically I think he's doing really good I mean he can walk and that's a huge thing he walks on the treadmill all the time he started a fireplace the other day he makes his breakfast and he cooks 
cooks and he can vacuum and clean and do like different like you know household things like that right now he's not at a time where he can drive again or work but he is like being taken care of and mentally I think that's the biggest area where he's still progressing. I think the biggest blessing was that he remembered who like our family was. Like he has his long-term memory and that is really really good and a foundation for our family that we needed and like wanted him to still have but he's just working through kind of this short-term memory struggle and so maybe some of you guys have family members who have gone through something like that but it can be hard on us and on him. Some days are better than others but overall like we're seeing things that are really encouraging and I guess the future is looking a little bit brighter like as the months go by nothing about this is really like in our control except for just you know following what the doctors say but all of it is really just up to God and how he wants to work behind the scenes with this so we're just giving it to him and trusting in how he's gonna lead our family through this and build us and I know it's been a challenge for our faith but that's part of I guess being a Christian or a person of faith so not saying that everything has been positive but moral of the story is that he's doing way better than we could have ever imagined and we're very grateful for that and we love him and we get to do things with him spend time with him there's times where he feels like he can't say that he's not doing good because he knows how much of a blessing it is for him to be here but I also know like he is so strong and he's taking it day by day that's all that he can do so we're proud of him. He's struggling like any person would if they were to go through this, but he's doing good overall and we're really, really grateful for where he's at. Next question. Sorry, that was a little bit of a longer one. Okay, who's your favorite friend? Oh, I'm not like obviously not going to pick like a favorite friend, but I do think it is worth mentioning that I've really been reflecting on this and just like the friends that I do have in my life and I feel like so lucky. Like I'm still friends with a core group of friends from high school, which is very rare, but our friendship is still growing which is also just another amazing thing and I also have new friends that I've, I'm growing relationships with from college relationships with people in like previous jobs or just other activities I was a part of or even people I've met through social media so this is just a little shout out to all of you guys because I know that like the people that you have in your life it's just underrated like you need really positive friends in your life and I'm just really happy to be at that spot where I feel like I am uplifted by the friends of my life even through 2020 with things being so crazy and hard to stay connected like we're really putting the time and effort in to make sure that we stay close or that we you know stay in touch or we catch up or whatever that may be but I'm really really excited about just where I'm at right now okay so the next question is what have you learned during 2020 which I am sure I could go on such a tangent about this like there are so many different directions that I could take this year because it has been a time of challenge and struggle and emotional like trauma honestly and just frustration and confusion like so many different things going on but there also has been a lot of blessings and slowness and rest and I wanted to talk about this because I think this is an insane way of how God kind of works behind the scenes. I don't know if you guys remember, but I said this in a previous video, maybe at the beginning of the year, that I had a specific word that I was going to focus on going into 2020. And that word was rest. And I had no idea that that would, you know, be so evident in 2020. Like when I picked that word out, I knew I was just consumed by this busy life and just the busyness, the hustle just trying to fit as much as we can into our schedules like the way that our world is right now it's like who can be the busiest who can fit in the most and like have the biggest goals and all this stuff so you can put a lot of pressure on yourself but my thing with this year is I wanted to focus on rest and time of reflection and just being okay to not have to go 24 7 like at the beginning of the year I feel like I really struggled maybe at like March or April when we were first coming home and making the adjustment and then as the months went on that's when I really struggled with being forced into this kind of restful season I already talked about this in a previous video so you guys can check that video out because it was a really good video of just me reflecting on how I was comfortable in the busyness but when I slowed down it was kind of an anxious time for me but once I learned how to find comfort in slowing down in that rest I was just filled up with goodness and seeing how evident it was 
throughout the year, I have really, really found so much joy in just slowing down and just being content in, you know, whatever circumstances that I am. I love that verse. So because I can go on such a tangent about this and I have so many thoughts circulating, I wanted to sum it up in this um, quote that I found. It says, we can rest in the unknown because it is not unknown to God. So I feel like that is really what I've just learned this whole entire year. I mean, I really struggled with like, where am I supposed to put my effort and energy into and what really matters? And um, how am I supposed to go day by day, you know, not knowing what the future holds or not knowing what I'm supposed to put that energy into so that it will be worth it. But it's not unknown to God. And that gave me so much comfort. I wanted to share something else too, because I asked you guys and a lot of you guys agreed. You learned in 2021, the Lord loves me always, which... 100% is so comforting just to know and I just love that thought and the other thing is just that we're not in control and God is good even when our circumstances aren't that's the best way that I can explain it is that 2020 was a time for me to learn how to rest how to slow down how to give up all control and just put everything into God's hands and trust in him seriously always okay so the next question is how has this year been for you and how did you make it through so I would say this year was definitely filled with ups and downs I think this I mean I don't think I know this year was the first year that I really experienced any sort of like mental health struggles. I think I probably experienced it in the past, but this is the first year that I've like really acknowledged it and like felt it and was honestly a little bit scared of it but it was the first time where I like really took action to work through it and not rush the process but also just acknowledge everything I was going through some of the things that helped me make it through was one going back to me reading the entire bible I feel like every single time I did that I found something that really helped me but I always opened my heart for what I was supposed to hear that day or what I was supposed to read and it really helped me every single day I think even when I got in a rut and things felt like I was just going through the motions when that happened I started to find you know a different routine or somehow switch it up so that I was still energized to do that every day and I also journaled a lot which let me show you this I wasn't like super consistent with it and I didn't want to put pressure on myself but it is really cool to know that these are here for me to look back into this was just my journal that I would write in also I really used two books so I think this was at the beginning of quarantine I didn't actually finish this because I'm horrible at finishing books but I think I'm going to work on that for the next year. This book is called Everybody Always but it's Bob Goff's book and he's amazing and this was just really cool to see like real life examples but also I read this book. This book is by Tim Tebow and I 100% recommend it. It's called Shaken. It's just built on this idea of what are we going to do when our life is shaken and I think that was like the perfect timing for me to have read it this year because that's exactly what I feel like happened to all of us. The back says who are you when life is steady? Who are you when storms come really awesome for this year I tried to read and it wasn't always consistent and then I already touched on this earlier but I think just the people in my life whether it's like my family or my friends or even just like through such a positive community on here through social media I think there are a lot of hard parts to social media that I've realized this year but also at the same time there's like a really really awesome potential to be able to reach so many people and be able to connect with you guys so that has been awesome and I think that it's been kind of cool in the sense that we're all going through the same thing at the same time even though it's not an ideal situation I feel like it is really cool to lean on each other and to be able to encourage each other the last thing I wanted to talk about and kind of invite you guys into was just like this YouTube mindset kind of struggle that I've been going through but I feel like I'm making it over the hump I just wanted to be honest with you guys like why this is so hard sometimes okay first of all I know I've talked about this before but I am an Enneagram 7 and it's so hard to like stay on track with like one thing I feel like I have so many different ideas and so many different different interests but it's hard for me to like narrow down on what I post for you guys but I want to become more like consistent on certain things that I'm posting with a little bit of a variety but I don't know like I definitely get in my head and it's hard to keep a certain momentum sometimes and I know this is for anybody but I'll feel really really good creatively I'll have a bunch of ideas and a bunch of things I think I'm gonna do I'll tell you guys a certain date and tell you guys like my plan and then I just am not as passionate about that certain thing anymore or like I have another big idea and I want to start something else I've just been struggling with being consistent with 
one thing or staying consistent in general and I need to get better at that I need to be better at staying connected with you guys on Instagram like I said I was gonna be but I feel like this year has been so easy for me to just be like okay like not this week but I do want to stay connected with you guys anyways I was looking back through my book this book is actually where I made my 2020 like new year's resolutions or not, not resolutions but just goals that i had and i completely forgot that i made some of these goals but as far as youtube goes i think this is so cool i want to celebrate you guys so last year i actually wrote in here for my goals of 2020 i wrote down that i hadn't reached 500 subscribers yet but we still got close in that for 2020 i was working to reach 1000 subscribers when i started 2020 i wasn't even at 500 subscribers and today I'm at 1810 subscribers. I think that is so cool and they always say when you write down a goal that you usually will far exceed that goal. I had no idea when I looked back at this but this is also a really really big celebratory moment. It really does show how far it can take you when you're consistent and today it is December 17th and would you look at that. I actually made it to 4,003 watch hours today. And I just wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much. If you guys are new right now, if you guys have been watching me in the past and like been here since the beginning, it doesn't matter like when you came, but I'm so happy that you guys like watching or hanging out or just being a part of the honey bunch. So I just appreciate all of you honeys. I am really, really excited about 2021 because I have big ideas, but like I said, I'm not gonna say anything because it always changes in my head. But in my heart, I know that this is something I wanna continue in 2021. It's gonna be big for us. So I'm excited for what comes next, but I think that's where I'm gonna be where I end today's video. Hopefully you guys liked just hanging out, listening to things that are going on in my head. I don't even know if I made sense like at all, but if you guys are here right now, you guys are incredible. Definitely, definitely helps my channel. If you guys give this video a like, subscribe, and become a part of the family. I do have bloopers at the end of every single video. You guys are stunning supporters. I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, honey. What should my intro be? Hey, honey. Hey, honey. Why is my lighting changing? How do we put this into words? I think I need to be done. I don't know why this caffeine is not working for me right now. At all. Yeah, we'll see how that all went.